Hey, I'm Pops, and before I get into the episode, I want to say R.I.P. Michael Reeves. Um, over 20 episodes, including the one we're about to talk about. Uh, rest in peace, my friend. Um, thank you for all you did for fandom and pop culture. All right, welcome Saturday morning cartoons. I am Pops having this great rewatch experience with you guys. It just making my day uh, in weeks. Uh, just it's awesome. This episode is called um, "Perchance to Dream." It's one of the. It's one of my favorites in that it's very underrated, but it has some very interesting elements and then a really cool twist. Not all of these episodes have twists. This one actually does. Uh, let me note though, by the way, at the end, if you stay till the end or possibly in the middle. You never know what I might try to pull. Uh, but we're going to try to squeeze in some more commercials and ads, a little bit of that taste of what things were like back in the day. So we're going to do some retro commercials. Those will be out there. Well, so hopefully you're enjoying those. So this is an episode that starts with like a chase scene. He is in the Batmobile. We're chasing down some criminals. And you know, i got to be honest, just the fact that he's crashing the Batmobile, just trying to show the intensity of a chase scene and stuff that he would go through. But he's actually there uh running them down on foot and then he's blinded by a flash of light and then something hits him and he's knocked unconscious and when he wakes up uh he's bruce wayne no memory of how he got there like no idea what happened right and the entire premise is set around that as the trigger point and then what he finds is nothing is as it was there's no bat cave he's going to the little secret nope alfred has no idea about robin and Bruce's parents are alive, right? Thomas and Martha are there. He's engaged to Selena, right? You're like, what on earth is going on? He actually is starting to think he has gone insane, right? And he sees Leslie and talks about the nightmare being over in the sense of everything in this life seems like it's okay. Like it's not so bad. And he tells his dad, Thomas Wayne's alive, that is, he's never felt better. Right. And he tries to kind of get into everything. He starts to try to adapt and work on this. And at one point, though, he starts to read. He sits down to read and everything is all mumble jumbled. Nothing is working. It's like it's not quite right. And he just starts ranting about it's a lie. It's a lie. He smashes the TV set because it has Batman off. There's a Batman out there. Right. And he's like, it's Batman's fault. Right. It's so intense. And you're like, what is going on? And then you cut to Bruce. He's trying to figure this out, right? He purchased flare guns. He, uh, police are there like, you're acting really, really strange. And he ends up going to the cemetery. And then he ends up in the bell tower. And then basically it's Bruce Wayne fighting Batman. And you're like, what? This episode, it's like something is so strange in this episode. And you have him going back and forth, back and forth before you realize this is a dream. He realizes that because he couldn't read and reading is the right side of the brain. Dreams are always the left side of the brain. That's why it wouldn't work. That's his thing. So Batman and him are in this big fight. I got to be honest. This is really an interesting visually because it was done very much as like a callback to Batman 89, except that it's done in the rain. The animation is just beautiful. This episode is really, really beautifully done and executed. And then when, because, and then when Bruce Wayne pulls the mask off and it's the Mad Hatter, and you're like, oh, man, they got me. They got me. And the Mad Hatter is explaining that he created this I ideal world. Now, everything in the world, in the real world, is separate, right? So this is the Mad Hatter doesn't know he's Bruce, doesn't know what's happening in this utopian that he's created. He just has a mind manipulation device that creates it. And he's screaming at him, you know, you're not the real Mad Hatter. Make it stop. Um, it's like, don't, don't you like the fantasy world I created for you? Right. And it's like, are you the dreamer or part of someone else's dream? You're in your own private wonderland. The dialogue cuts right through all of this. 
cuts right through his purpose, cuts right through us questioning our own dreams. Beautifully done. Beautiful. Um, and you can't hurt a dream. You can't wake up. But of course, what's he do? He jumps over the side, right? Because the police are going to show up, right? And it's like, he, 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 he's nuts. He thinks he's crazy. No, he jumps over the side. And of course, he wakes up. And then when he jumps up, you know, he's awake. And he's there at the warehouse. There's the dream machine. And now, Batman, you've ruined his life. You've ruined the Mad Hatter's life. This is his revenge. Don't you see? This is it. I'd rather give you a utopia. I give you a happy place to go to. Just go there. Stay there. Be happy. Leave me alone. You know, give me back a chance to have my life, right? And then the home run comes at the end. Mad Hatter's been abducted. He's going to the police. There's Gordon. He hands him this little device. Like Gordon's like, I don't, what is this thing? He's like, the stuff dreams are made of. Oh, Mike Reeves. Oh man, Michael Reeves. You did it, man. You did a, such a great job with this. I can't tell you that if you had asked me at the beginning of this adventure that I would have listed this among my favorites, I would not have. I would not have thought of this episode. It would not have been one that would have come to mind. But now it's top notch. Love it. Hope you're enjoying Saturday morning cartoons. Hope you enjoy the commercials. Hope you're having a good time hanging out with me. We'll return after these messages. All aboard! Wait for me. A porcupine. You're on my train. And with a popping suitcase. I'm Poppy, and those are my sugar corn pops. They're just popping with crunchy, sweet taste. You can try them. Well, if it doesn't take too long. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pop Cereal. A popping good part of this nutritious breakfast. Mmm, delicious. Poppy, I wouldn't miss these for anything. Even for our train? Even for <laughs> my train. Capri Sun. Now you can buy a Capri Sun jacket, t-shirt, kite, and backpack with proof of purchase from a 10-pack plus the cost of each item. You can look inside your 10-pack for details. Your batting average is totally awesome. What's your secret? m and M. I hit singles when I eat the brown ones, doubles with the yellows, orange, triples. And with the green ones, I take the ball downtown. Magnificent! Kevin, you're up. Quick, give me a green one. Only one homer left. That's for me. Here's a triple. M&M's chocolate candies. The milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. T, he's got legs and moves. He's 12 inches high. Mr. T, he's got a real cool haircut and a mean, mean look in his eye. You can't pretend that Mr. T is real tough and me. Mr. T. Mr. T. Mr. T. By Galoob.